In today's video, we are going to take a look at the Congress of Vienna, the peace deal that was made, and most importantly, the potential alternate proposals and wishes of the great powers during the negotiations. This video will not concern itself too much with the likelihood of each of these events, only discussing possibilities, likely or not. This video will also place a heavy focus on the desires of the five great powers, instead of the wishes of every individual European power. Why? Because just look at what Germany looks like. If we were to discuss the desires of every single power, most of this video would entail me saying, this small German state would prefer not to be annexed by Prussia. So before we dive in, let's quickly discuss the desires of the five great powers and the rough outline of the peace deal agreed upon at Vienna. The first two powers, and arguably the two diplomatic leaders of the negotiations, are Britain and Austria. Their goal was primarily to ensure balance, preventing another European conflict on the same scale as the Napoleonic Wars. For Britain, this meant ensuring strong nations like the Netherlands and Sardinia Piedmont stood between France and expansion, as well as Prussia getting beefed up to the standard of a true great power to oppose French and Russian expansionism. For Austria, balance also included diplomatic hegemony over Germany and Italy, thereby preventing other powers from expanding into these regions. In contrast are the powers of Russia and Prussia, whose primary goal was expansion. Tsar Alexander had promised to his nobles that Poland would be gained as a reward for Russia's rule during the war, while also seizing territories like Finland from Sweden. Prussia then was by far the weakest of the great powers, controlling many lands that were disconnected from their core lands, and despite impressive militarization and state building, Prussia would need more lands to keep up with the other powers, with especially the rich German West and Saxony being eyed up by the Prussians. Then the final great power is France, whose goals are a bit mixed, as they fit both the expansion and the balance categories, but above these two, the French primary goal was simply survival. The French had just ravaged Europe and been defeated, and there was always the distinct possibility that the other European powers just divide up France amongst themselves. But France still held some desires to gain territories in northern Italy, the Lowlands, western Germany and Spain, should this be possible, while also hoping to keep states like Poland and Saxony strong and intact to prevent Russian and Prussian expansionism. So these five great powers met and discussed the future of Europe to negotiate our timeline's Congress of Vienna. Keystones of this new Europe included a powered up Netherlands to stop French expansion, a complete rework of Germany, where a German confederation replaced the old Holy Roman Empire and Prussia got expanded to become a true great power, while in Italy, Sardinia annexed Genoa and Austria annexed Lombardy Venetia, while puppeting the minor Italian nations. Poland would be destroyed and divided between their neighbors, with Russia gaining the bulk. On the world stage, the British also took the important Dutch colonies of South Africa and Sri Lanka. So let's dive into some potential changes to the peace deal, where one of the first and biggest potential changes was which map to start negotiations from. There were two main potentials. The first map was the map of 1792. This was a logical choice since this was before any of the French revolutionary conquests. Choosing this 1792 map essentially reset Europe to before the French Revolution. As such, this map was supported by Austria, Britain and Russia. But opposing them were France and Prussia, who wanted to use this 1806 map as a baseline. During the early stages of the Napoleonic upheavals, both France and Prussia had rapidly expanded themselves, and starting with this map as a baseline, this would likely result in a larger France and Prussia in the final end result. We will spend most of this video on the 1792 base map, as this is the one used in real life negotiations, and cap the video off with some potentials for the 1806 map, which will be significantly more difficult since no real negotiations were had for that map. So, starting with the 1792 model, one of the major issues immediately becomes clear. Poland exists. Both during and before the French revolutions, Russia, Prussia and Austria had partitioned the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth amongst themselves. So, despite this map, there was no actual Polish state and the future of Poland would need to be decided upon. The nation most interested in the future of Poland was Russia, so let's look at their plans for it. They wanted it all. In a perfect world for Russia, the entirety of Poland would go to them, hoping to compensate Prussia with lands elsewhere. This plan, however, 
was extremely unpopular with the other three great powers, most notably Austria, who had a different and equally extreme plan for Poland. They wanted full Polish independence, even hoping to give up Prussian and Austrian lands to this new Polish state, making it even more powerful. This way, Poland could stand as a barrier between Russia and Central Europe, a role which Austria now had to take on. But apart from these two extremist options, there was also potential for compromise. An option for a reduced Poland has a small Poland centered around Warsaw remaining intact. Then the final option is Poland simply remaining divided like it had been after the Polish partitions. Though this is something that would be very unpopular with Russia. Eventually, this compromise was decided upon, where Russia got most of Poland, but Prussia and Austria kept some lands as well. But a special arrangement was decided upon, where Poland was not a full part of the Russian Empire, but a separate entity with certain legal protections and autonomy, whose king simply happened to also be the Tsar of Russia. This Polish issue was deeply coupled with another one, Saxony. The Prussians, seeking territorial expansion, desired to completely annex Saxony, a major state close to their heartland. While the Polish dispute was being negotiated, the Prussians had agreed to allow Russia most of Poland if the Russians were to back Prussian demands on Saxony. But this was not what happened. Austria, France and Britain staunchly opposed the Prussian and Russian land grabs and especially the Austrian Emperor opposed this Prussian annexation as Austria wanted to position itself as the defender of small states. In total, there are three options for Saxony. It could survive full size, it could have been fully annexed by the Prussians, or, just like in our timeline, it could have survived as a reduced but independent state. Moving up north, we have the issue of Scandinavia, where there are two prizes to give away. Norway, currently held by Denmark, and Finland, officially held by Sweden, but actually controlled by Russia. Norway isn't all too difficult. Denmark had sided with the French, and as compensation for Sweden's role in defeating Napoleon, it was given to Sweden. Compensating Sweden became even more important, since the Russians gained all of Finland, and it would have been really awkward if the Swedes lost land despite being on the winning side. So, in a best case scenario, Sweden could have built a true Nordic Union, retaining Finland and gaining Norway, which would have been very cool, though not something the Russians would ever agree to. Then we have the only global decision that needs to be made, which regards what to do with the Dutch Empire. During the Napoleonic Wars, the British had seized the Dutch Empire to ensure that the French don't get access to it. And this included some very, very important territories. Sri Lanka was a major hub for Asian trade, South Africa is a crucial location to resupply for global trade, and the Dutch crown jewel, Indonesia, a massively rich territory in Asia. In our timeline, the British decided to keep South Africa and Sri Lanka for their own purposes while giving Indonesia and Suriname back, but we also have other options. The first is the potential where the British gave all the Dutch colonies back. This would be in line with British ambitions to build up a strong Dutch state capable of standing up to Prussian and French expansionism. But it's difficult to overstate just how important and influential these regions are for the British and they would surely be shooting themselves in the foot by not keeping these territories. Alternatively, there is also the option of the British seizing all Dutch colonies, most notably including Indonesia. This would be a very radical move by the British, likely leading to condemnation from the other powers while setting up Britain for practical hegemony over Asia. If Britain went this route, they would quite literally stand as the only significant colonial power on earth, as the Spanish and Portuguese empires were about to break as well. But at the end of the day, none of the other great powers have the global reach to force anything from Britain, and it's just Britain's decision. To keep on the Dutch, we have the issue of Belgium. In our timeline, it was granted to the Dutch to build the Dutch up to be a strong state capable of resisting French and Prussian expansion. But the territory had belonged to the Austrians before, and if Austria had really pressed for it, they could have kept the land. The only issue with this, Austria didn't really want it. It was distantly removed from the Austrian mainland, making it more difficult to administer and especially defend, while putting Austria on the front line of any French expansion. So, when considering the future of the lowlands, Austria could have kept the territory if they so wanted, but even then, it's possible that they sell it off later anyways. Then we have perhaps the biggest change that we can make, how we treat France at all. 
The initial plan for the Congress of Vienna was to have the victorious great powers, Russia, Prussia, Austria and Britain, decide the future of Europe. France was only later let in as a full negotiating power, because it was realized that with only four powers, the Austro-British balance team and the Prussian-Russian expansionist teams may just reach a deadlock, meaning that a new war may break out. With France as the fifth negotiating partner, any deadlock can be broken. But it didn't have to be that way. The Prussians especially considered punishing France hard. It's difficult to think of specifics, since this wasn't fully discussed, but there are options like breaking up Brittany and Lorraine from France, returning Corsica to Genoa, giving land in northern France to the Dutch or the Austrians, depending on who got Belgium, and maybe even some Prussian gains as compensation, resulting in a smaller, post-Vienna France. But the absolute biggest question mark of the entire peace treaty is Germany. In 1792, the Holy Roman Empire still existed, but it got dissolved in 1806 after France took over most of Germany, with important member states like Bavaria and Saxony even siding with France. So, when the war was fought and peace was discussed, a big question now arose. What to do with the empire? The empire could simply be restored, which would be a big move, signifying the true return of the old world order. Still, this wasn't too popular of a concept, as even Austria, the supposed leader of this empire, considered it a weak institution only dragging them down. Instead, in our timeline, a new institution was thought up, the German Confederation, binding the German states together in a military alliance. Another option was to leave all the German states on their own, with all gaining full independence. This would be the most chaotic option, leaving the minor German states to seek Prussian and especially Austrian protection, leaving Germany in a very weak position for future French and Prussian expansionist ambitions. Going all the way into the other direction, it was also briefly considered to replace the weak Holy Roman Empire with a unified, albeit decentralized, German state. This, however, is a very unlikely prospect. France, Britain and Russia would absolutely not be happy to accept this new super state. The Austrians would only accept the proposal if they were to rule this new Germany, but even internally, Prussia would absolutely never accept integration into Habsburg Austria, Britain wouldn't want to give up Hanover, and even other smaller German states would likely not be willing to integrate into Austria. But Britain, even if only briefly, considered another course of action for Germany. France and Russia were absolutely terrifying military powers, and Prussia was simply not strong enough to stand up to either of them. They had to become more powerful. So, Britain considered creating a Prussian-led North German Confederation to beef up Prussia into becoming a true great power. The proposal never reached a concrete stage, but it would have been very interesting if Prussia was expanded into most of Northern Germany. But, in the end, the German Confederation was created, Prussia became more powerful, most notably expanding on the western bank on the Rhine to be on the front lines against the French. The rest of Germany was also reorganized, consolidating Germany with the region going from 300 states down to just 39. Most of these negotiations were done via the German Commission, a grouping of all German states led by Austria deciding upon the future of the region. After the great success of this German Commission, calls were made to do the same for Italy. This Italian Commission would then likely also be led by Austria to decide upon the future of Italy. In our timeline, this didn't happen, as Austria planned to control as much of Italy as they could, but if the Italian Commission had occurred, it's possible that the Italian states would have had more of a say into the future of their region. It's difficult to say how this would have looked, since Austria did still desire to expand into the region, but in a best case scenario, an Italian confederation could have been established, much like in Germany, with Austria as the guarantor power. But, returning back from dreamland, Austria wouldn't accept this. Britain was fine with Austria dominating Italy, as it would prevent French expansion, while Prussia and Russia barely cared about Italy at all. With Austria having such a strong mandate to do whatever they wanted in Italy, why would they accept an Italian commission reducing their influence? But in the Italian reorganization, one thing that's very important is the expansion of Sardinia Piedmont, ensuring that the Piedmontese can stand up against French expansion. It's even possible that Sardinia gets even more land to stand up even better to the French. But, realistically, Austria was still going to annex Lombardia-Venetia, one of the richest regions in Europe, to bolster their own power. 
The other Italian states weren't directly annexed by Austria, but Habsburgs were put in charge of these nations with Austrian ministers and government officials. One nation that did have a real problem with this was Spain, who had hoped to see their own power in Italy expanded as a result of the war. But with that, we have discussed most of the potential changes to the Treaty of Vienna. During the Napoleonic Wars, Russia had also defeated the Ottomans in a war, so with that calculated in, here we have the new map of Europe. But before I end this video, let's take another look at that 1806 proposal. Like mentioned at the start of the video, it was supported by France and Prussia, and this could have been the map where negotiations started from. It had some real interesting features, most unignorably a massive French empire controlling most lands west of the Rhine. Similarly, much of Europe is currently controlled by a French puppet regime, with most interestingly, much of Germany and northern Italy unified under French rule. Meanwhile, Poland didn't actually exist at all either, already being divided between their neighbors. Obviously, this map wasn't actually chosen, so I cannot go into as much detail, but let's broadly look at some potential. First off, obviously, Big France would be absolutely unacceptable to all participants. France would be pushed back from Italy, the Lowlands and Germany. It is possible that the French come out slightly larger than in our timeline, but not by much. It should also go without saying that the French puppet regimes are not the last. It is possible that the Polish division goes slightly differently in this alternate timeline, since it would be more difficult for the Russians to push for a full annexation of Poland when most of Poland is under Prussian and Austrian control, but at the end of the day, Russian desires haven't changed. It is very possible that Prussia comes out of this alternate treaty bigger and more powerful. This map is also not ideal for Austria, as they would now have to negotiate the breakup and reorganization of the Italian and German puppet regimes. At the end of the day, even if the 1806 proposal was chosen, I highly doubt that the final peace deal would be radically different to the one in our own timeline, as the fundamental desires of the great powers are still the same, but the details would absolutely be different, and the negotiations would likely take much longer and be much more difficult, as very little about this 1806 map would be acceptable to the European great powers. But with that, we have discussed most of the potentials for this alternate Congress of Vienna, so this is where I'll end this video. Thank you all for watching, consider leaving a like and a comment to support the content, subscribe for two more videos every single week, and to continue watching, click on one of the two videos on screen now. Again, thank you for watching, and goodbye.